This is Twit. Chrome's root program. Um, a little less than two weeks ago, a new peer, a new page appeared at Chromium.org titled Chrome Root Program, uh, and it was not met with universal joy. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, uh, of course, this podcast has covered the operation of SSL, TLS, web server trust certificates at great length because its proper operation and functioning is crucial to enabling users and their web browsers to establish a trust relationship with otherwise unknown remote web servers. Now we just all take it for granted. Uh, and as we know, it, the system is far from perfect. It has a myriad of well-known failure modes. It relies upon several different actors, each performing their jobs perfectly, where failure by any of them to do so results in a local breach of the privacy and security guarantees, which is the system's entire purpose. But for better or for worse, it's a system we have today. Um, someday, maybe something will obsolete it. Uh, but again, um, okay, so from the beginning, Chrome and most other browsers, most with a single exception, have all relied upon the connection security and certificate verification provided by whatever operating system they were running on. The notable exception to this has always been Mozilla and Firefox. To their credit, Netscape, way back then with their Netscape Navigator, invented SSL 1.0. And the concept of using public key cryptography to provide both server authentication and connection content privacy. Over time, this evolved into NSS, which is Mozilla's Network Security Services. NSS is the, is the SSL TLS library upon which Firefox runs and which it uses to provide all of its network connection security. Since NSS is cross-platform and a freestanding component of Firefox, it includes its own root certificate store, which anchors the validation chain of any certificate received from a web server that Firefox is connecting to. All other web browsers, which inherently have a shallower history than Netscape's Navigator, since it was the it was first, uh, and Mozilla's Firefox, which you know is a descendant, rely, as I mentioned, upon the hosting OS's platform for their connection security. But how many times have I noted that today's modern cryptography is a solved problem? What was once decidedly regarded as highly complex, you know, don't mess with it, magic crypto from some ivory tower guru is now run of the mill. So the barrier to entry of bringing up a new TLS communications foundation from scratch is as low as it's ever been, which is quite low now. So against that backdrop, Google's new Chrome root program really shouldn't surprise us. Um, Google wants control over this aspect of Chrome's operation, which it has until now delegated to its hosting OS. You know, it, Chrome was able to operate on the sidelines. We've talked about how this works through the years. Basically, it was able to watch the connections, blacklist, and pin certificates. But it's never been in the position to directly and completely manage the root store, which underlies its browser's trust. And, and you know, knowing Google, that's got to chafe. So they finally decided, okay, we're just going to do this. But running a root store program is also a significant responsibility since who you need to, uh, uh, um, um, well, it's, it's, it's a responsibility because you need to be very careful about deciding who you let in, who you don't, who you may need to kick out based on their behavior, 
over the years, the podcast has tracked a number of these incidents. And of course, these decisions that you make directly affect your customer's security and their ability to get to wherever it is they're trying to go. Um, remember this torturous decision that the browser and OS vendors had to make when Startcom was clearly found to be misbehaving and, and issuing certificates that they should not have been. Um, and, you know, it wasn't just that they made a mistake. It's that they weren't forthcoming with it. And, you know, that's almost a bigger no-no uh, than, than making a mistake. So from its position, which has up until now been on the sidelines, Google, as I mentioned, was able to sniff the certificate exchange and block certificates that, for example, after the decision was made to, to stop accepting certificates signed by Startcom, uh, they couldn't remove the Startcom cert from the underlying OS's root store because it wasn't theirs to manage. So clearly it makes sense with, with Chromium going the way it has that, that Google is going to just run their own. So their low key announcement of their intention to develop and run their own root store program, um, it, it establishes the, the, um, the importance of the browser's root store with this very short description that sort of sort of states their case. They said, when Chrome presents the connection to a website as secure, Chrome is making a statement to its users about the security properties of that connection because of the CAs, the, the certificate authorities, critical role in upholding those properties Chrome must ensure the certificate authorities who issue certificates are operated in a consistent and trustworthy manner. This is achieved by referring to a list of root certificates from certificate authorities that have demonstrated why continued trust in them is justified. This list is referred to as a root store. The policies and requirements for participating and being included in a root store are known as a root program. So, uh, you know, for long-standing tried and true certificate suppliers with a with a well-known, time-proven track record and impeccable credentials, like my own favorite provider, Digicert, inclusion in Google's, Mozilla's, and other any oper and any other operating systems root store is pretty much a pro forma no-brainer. But the world has a great many certificate authorities of somewhat questionable reputation and deciding whom to trust can be very political uh, as we've seen in some of these discussions. So since the security of the Chromium Project's upcoming root store is of crucial importance, I wanted to share the inclusion policies and their underlying philosophy um, it's just sort of a, it's interesting to get a sort of a, a, a snapshot into this. Google said the explanations below describe the Chrome root program and policies and requirements for CAs to have their certificates included in a default installation of Chrome as part of the transition to the Chrome root store, because, of course, it doesn't exist today. And everyone wants to be in it tomorrow. So they said, historically, Chrome is integrated with the root store provided by the platform on which it is running. Chrome is in the process of transitioning certificate verification to use a common implementation on all platforms where it's under application control, namely Android, Chrome OS, Linux, Windows, and Mac. Apple, pol and this is interesting, Apple policies prevent the Chrome root store and verifier from being used on Chrome for iOS. Yes, it's, you know, too closed. You need, you know, on iOS, you have to use their underlying connection architecture. Web, so WebKit, yeah. With, yes, with that comes their root store. They said this will ensure users 
have a consistent experience across platforms, that developers have a consistent understanding of Chrome's behavior, and that Chrome will be better able to protect the security and privacy of users' connections to websites. You know, yeah. Is they just want control. They want to run their own store. They said, for CAs that already participate in other public root programs, such as the Mozilla root program, many of these requirements and processes, processes should be familiar. They said, during this transition, the Chrome root store contains a variety of existing certification authorities certificates that have historically worked in Chrome on the majority of supported platforms. So yeah, naturally, they're going to start with, you know, the standard set of CAs. They said this promotes interoperability on different devices and platforms and minimizes compatibility issues. This should ensure as seamless a transition as possible for users. In addition to compatibility considerations, CAs have been selected on the basis of past and current publicly available and verified information, such as that within the common CA certificate database, which is known as the CCADB. CCADB, they wrote, is a database run by Mozilla and used by a variety of operating systems, browser vendors, and certifica certification authorities to share and disclose information regarding the ownership, historical operation, and audit history of CA certificates and key material. So in other words, they're not just going to just grab everything and not like verify that it's something that they, for their own store, agree that you know they really want to have in theirs. They said for, for CAs that have not been included as part of this initial Chrome root store, Questions can be directed to Chrome Root Authority Program with hyphens at google.com. Priority is given to CAs that are widely trusted on platforms that Chrome supports in order to minimize compatibility issues. For the inclusion of new CA certificates, priority is given to CAs in the following order in order to minimize disruption or risks to Chrome users. And they've got a, they have a, a list of five. So here's the order. First, CAs that are widely trusted and which are replacing older certificates with certificates and key material created within the past five years and have an unbroken sequence of annual audits where these certificates and key material are explicitly listed in scope. Two, CAs whose certificates and certificate hierarchy are only used to issue TLS server certificates and do not issue other forms of certificates. Three, CAs that have undergone a widely recognized public disclosure process regarding their CP, CPS audits and practices. So CP is certificate policy, which is a formal statement that the certificate authority has published. And CPS is certification practices statement, another formal statement. At this time, they said, the only discussion process recognized as acceptable is the discussion process operated by Mozilla on, on behalf of of the open source community at mozilla.dev.security.policy. Okay, so that's a news group. And it is fascinating. Uh, if you're curious to see how the sausage is made, and surprisingly how much sausage there is to be made, you really need to check out mozilla.dev.security.policy. If you just Google that, uh, the first link is a link to groups.google.com. You know, it, 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 it's basically the, the Google view of this, this old school NNTP style news group, mozilla.dev.security.policy. Um, it is so easy for us to underappreciate all the hard and really thankless work that goes on to our immeasurable benefit behind the scenes by real people who will never know to thank. When you just look at some of these discussions, 
it's like, wow. I mean, like there's just so much work that they're doing uh, on our behalf in order to end up with this, this heavily curated list of certificates. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So continuing down in priority for CAs that maintain sole control over certificate key material within their CI, CA certificate hierarchy and include their entire certificate hierarchy within a single audit scope. And finally, CAs that have been annually audited according to both the Web Trust principles and criteria for CAs and the Web Trust principles and criteria for CAs SSL baseline with network security. So, yes, this is lots of bureaucracy, but uh, it's bureaucracy we depend upon in order to have the security that we just so casually take for granted. Yeah. 